When you see design, uh, what about the design of the two big lights we've got close to us, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the sun and the moon? Well, there are a couple of things I can talk about. First of all, the, the sun is, is 400 times larger than the moon. So when we make a model of the, of the, of the two, you'd, if you had a, a ball the size of an inch across, that would be the moon, and the sun would be 400 inches across. Gives you a bit of scale. That's not what we see, though. No, no, because you see, the, the, the sun is not only 400 times larger than the moon, but it's also 400 times farther away. Hmm. So if you take something and move it as far away as it is larger than the other, they have the same size yeah. to us. Uh, both the sun and the moon appear to be about a half degree across in our sky. Now, on rare occasions, the, the moon passes between us and the sun. Mm -hmm. Doesn't happen very often. About every year and a half somewhere in the world, usually in Timbuktu or Siberia or in Antarctica or something, we get a total solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, the, the sun just, the moon just barely covers the sun up. If the, if the moon were a little smaller or a little farther away, it wouldn't do it at all. If it were larger or, or closer to us, it would be grossly over total mm -hmm. and you'd be, wouldn't be nearly as spectacular. We get these rare and very spectacular eclipses. Well, uh, I've been to one total solar eclipse back in 1979. My wife and I drove 3,500 miles round trip in five days from South Carolina to up 100 miles north of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, that was in February. The snow was this deep up there. They have, they have four seasons, early winter, mid winter, late winter, and next winter. <laughs> and it was, it was cold. Yeah. And uh, we did it in five days, didn't have a whole lot of time. An old car, by the way, we drove a 22 year old car when we drove up there. And um, we were there for two minutes and 46 seconds of totality. Mm. And it's truly remarkable. Uh, you know, people that know me know that I, I talk a lot more than my wife does. And so during the eclipse, we ran this, uh, this tape recorder, ran it for about 20 minutes before, during, and after. We played it back later, and it was the strangest thing. During totality, my wife is just chattering away, and I hardly and said, I, I didn't say two words. I was, I was dumbstruck for <laughs> what amazing. you were seeing. Yeah, uh -huh. it was amazing. Most yeah. spectacular thing I'd ever seen. If I made a top 10 list of things I've experienced in my life, it would be the top four probably. There's another one coming in 2017. I, I hope to see that one. Yeah. It's first one since then coming across the continental U.S. It tells you how rare that they are. Do you think that's a design well, that well, God yeah, yeah. gave it's, to it's, us? It's the, uh, if you look at the other satellites, 170 or so in the solar system, none of them have those kind of requirements. Hmm. Uh, either they don't happen at all, or they're grossly over total, so they're not very rare and they're, and they're not very spectacular. You know, it takes, I read once that uh, on a given place on the Earth, we get a total solar eclipse about once every 400 years. So either, if you see one, you're either very lucky or you plan to be there yeah. to see the thing. And I've only seen one so far and I'm past 60 already. Huh. And uh, so these eclipses are, are spectacular and rare and this is the only planet on which it matters. And it's the only planet on which it happens. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I, don't find, I don't find that to right. be, just a coincidence. I think there's more to it than that. But there's another more important thing about it. Uh, the moon's orbit is different. We have the plane of the uh, Earth's orbit around the sun. We call this the ecliptic. It's imagine a flat plane here. The sun's here, and every every uh, every year the the Earth goes around like this, and it causes the sun to seem to move through the stars. Mm -hmm. That defines this ecliptic across the sky, this big line across the sky, the plane of our orbit. Now the moon's orbit is very close to that plane. It's tilted a few degrees, but basically the moon orbits around the earth in the same plane that the earth orbits around the sun. Of the 170 or so satellites in the solar system, it's the only one that does that. that right? All the others have different orbits. The most common type of orbit is above the equator of the, we'll call the equatorial plane hmm. of the planet. And each of the planets have different tilts. Our own tilt, uh, our own Earth's tilt's about 23 and a half degrees. So if this is a plane of the Earth's orbit, there's another plane, the equatorial plane, that's tilted 23 and a half degrees to that. Mm -hmm. And if the moon were like other satellites in the solar system, it would be orbiting in this plane, not in that plane. But the interesting thing is, that tells me something right away, that the, the origin of the moon must be different from other satellites. It must be unique, uh -huh. which, we kind of know that from Genesis yeah. because the purpose is involved. Yeah. I believe the moon is unique and the origin scenario perhaps would be unique as well. And you know, people of uh, astronomers have tried to claim, well, we need to study the, the satellites of the other planets, hopefully to learn more where the moon came from. Well, I say nonsense because the moon's orbit is, is unique in the solar system. Now again, you could argue that's a coincidence, you know, <laughs> but how many coincidences are you allowed mm -hmm. before you begin to realize, well, maybe these coincidences aren't coincidences at all.